hello, how to solve root t plus t equals 3? We are solving for all values of t that satisfy this equation. So we can start by moving t over here. We have root t equals 3 minus t. So right now we need to eliminate this square root. We can take the squares or put part of this equation. So this cancel this. I have t equals this is 3 minus t times 3 minus t. So from here, I have t equals 3 times 3. Let, let's expand this. We have 9, 3 times minus t, minus 3t, minus t times 3, minus 3t, minus t times minus t, plus t squared. So from here, I have t equals 9, minus 60 plus t squared. I can move this t over here. I have 0 equals 9 minus 60 plus t power 2 minus t. So from here, I'll have 0 equals 9 minus 70 plus t to the power of 2. So we can rearrange this and simply have t squared, this is minus 70 plus 9 equals 0. So this is a quadratic equation that we are going to solve for t. Then let's make use of formula method. So we have this is b squared minus 4 times ac if I have I 2a. So let's compare this with the general quadratic equation, which is ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. So right now, the coefficient of t squared, that is our a, is 1. b is negative 7. c is 9. So let's insert it right here into this formula. We are going to have t equals negative b. That's negative times negative 7, plus or minus. We have square root of b squared. This is negative 7 to the power of 2 minus 4 times a. We have 4 times 1 times c. That is 9. Divided by 2 times 1. So from here, I have t equals this is 7 plus or minus. Square root of this is 49 minus this is 36, 4 times 1 times 9, divided by 2. So from here, we will have t equal this is 7 plus or minus square root of 49 minus 36. This is 13, divided by 2. So we have two values for t. We have t equals 7 plus root 13 divided by 2. That is our t1. We also have t2. This is 7 minus root 13 divided by 2. So these are the two solutions. Now, the most important aspect of this video is to check for each of these solutions. Let's check. We have t. T1 equals, this is 7 plus root 13, divided by 2. We also have T2 equals 7 minus root 13, divided by 2. So let me quickly confirm the solution, because I have not written it down anywhere. Now, the solutions have proven to be the same, just like what I've written down here. So let's test using the equation, which is root T plus t equals 3. So I'm going to start with this first solution here, 7 plus root 13 divided by 2. So half square root of this, the square root of t, which is 7 plus root 13 divided by 2, plus t, which is 7 plus root 13 divided by 2, equals 3. So from here, I have square root of 
is is seven plus root thirteen is simply is about three point six uh, divided by two plus this is seven plus this is three point six divided by two equals three. So from here, we are going to have square root of seven plus three point six. This is ten point six divided by two plus this will give us ten point six divided by two equals three. So from here, I'm going to have square root of ten point six divided by two is about five point three plus this is five point three equals three. Now it is quite obvious that the number here is greater than three itself. So this will also give you about two point something. So you add this to this, it is obvious that it's going to be greater than three. So there's no need for us to even find the value of square root of 5.3 because it is obviously going to be greater than two. And if you add it to this 5.3, it will be greater than three. So that means the whole of this is greater than three, meaning that this solution here does not satisfy the equation, meaning it is a wrong solution. Now let's consider this one here, which is 7 minus root 13 divided by 2. So I'm still going to copy the equation again. I have root t plus t equals 3. So this means our t equals 7 minus root 13 divided by 2. So we substitute it here. I have square root of 7 minus root 13 divided by 2, then I have plus 7 minus root 13 divided by 2 equals 3. So from here, what I'm going to do is to find the square root of 13, which is 3.6 like what we did earlier on. Our square root of this is 3.6. And remember there is 7 here, I have 7 minus 3.6. Divided by 2 plus this is 7 minus 3.6 divided by 2 equals 3. So from here, as 7 minus 3.6, this will be about 3.4 divided by 2. I have square root here. Then I have plus this is 3.4 divided by 2 equals 3. So, what is the value of 3.4 divided by 2? So, 3.4 divided by 2 will give you 1.7 approximately. So, I have square root of this is 1.7 plus this is 1.7 equals 3. Now, from here, since this number here is less than 3, and here we have square root of 1.7, we can't go further. So the square root of 1.7 is about 1.3. So we have this is 1.3 plus 1.7 is equals 3. Now, if you add 1.3 to 1.7, you are going to have about 3.0, which is the same thing as 3. So guys, this is the solution that has satisfied the equation. So you can come over here and say that the only correct solution based on what we have solved is simply 7 minus root 13 divided by 2. So guys, this is how you can actually solve this radical problem. The first step is to move this t over here so that you are going to be left with square root of t. And from then, you take the squares or put part of this equation to eliminate the square root. Then you expand the squares, you expand it, and form a quadratic equation. So once you have a quadratic equation, you can decide to solve it using either the formula method or method of completing the squares, because this is clearly not factorizable. You cannot factorize it. So you solve it using the formula method. And once you solve it using the formula method, you have the value of A, B, and C from the equation and insert into this formula. We are going to have two different solutions, and the solutions are this. 
some plus rotating the variable two and this. Now the next key aspect is to check for each of the solutions. And upon checking, we just did discover that the only solution that satisfies this equation is cell minus rotating the variable two. So this becomes our authentic answer. So that is it. Thank you and goodbye.